fleeing the flames, wildfires threatening Canadian communities. To see everything from my childhood, from the sense of where I was born, everything burning to, to ash. Tonight, evacuations in Yellowknife and Kelowna and the escalating effort to help. Good evening. It is a situation growing more desperate by the hour. There is a state of emergency in Kelowna where a massive blaze is edging closer to the city. And Yellowknife is a ghost town. An order for residents to leave the capital has come and gone. That's where we begin our coverage tonight. And CTV's Alberta Bureau Chief Bill Fortier. Thousands gassed up. Hi. Stocked up on groceries at one of few businesses still open and hit the highway out of Yellowknife. Kind of crazy. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been in too many big fires like this. Others waited for buses to the airport, many still coming to grips with the extraordinary situation. The first full evacuation in Yellowknife's history. I don't know where we're going or what's all along. Tired, frustrated. Tired. <laughs> My whole family's already gone. The mass exodus left what's usually the hub of the Northwest Territories eerily quiet. Ottawa is calling on airlines to add more flights on top of what's already been added and promising to try to get more military aircraft involved in the effort. Last night, the Canadian Armed Forces moved nearly 80 long-term patients out of Yellowknife's hospital. The Canadian Coast Guard is providing personnel and equipment to assist with firefighting. Public Services and Procurement Canada is for supporting the territory with emergency contracting, and the RCMP is on the ground helping with evacuation efforts. Today and Saturday are critical in the fight to save the Northwest Territories capital. Shifting winds are blowing the fire directly towards the city. Firefighters have built three fire breaks, the black lines snaking their way through the forest. So to date, they've removed 150 hectares of, of trees, um, which is the buffer between the fire and Yellowknife. Uh, that's going to make a big difference, slowing it down. And with very little rain over the past couple of days, crews are not getting the help they need from Mother Nature. Territorial officials say the wildfire could make it to the edge of town by some point this weekend. Bill Fortier, CTV News, Yellowknife. In B.C., there are fears the wildfire situation will worsen with a change in the weather, potentially sparking more blazes. Officials warn the province could be facing the worst 48 hours of this wildfire season. Right now, much of the focus is on the Okanagan Valley, where firefighters are facing a difficult challenge for a second straight night. The firefight going on right now is as significant today as it was last night. So we need to put our focus there. Uh, we need to stop this fire uh, before it continues uh, any further. Then we'll get on to the counting, and then we'll get on to getting people back to their homes when it's safe. More homes are burning in the city of West Kelowna. The McDougal Creek wildfire grew six times in size overnight after destroying a significant number of other structures. This fast-moving blaze is now 68 square kilometers, and conditions are worse than they were yesterday. Thousands of properties are under evacuation orders. Across the lake, a state of emergency has also been declared in the city of Kelowna. We're in the thick of it. Um, this is not over. We're in uh, day two of a, of a fight that's going to go on for the for the foreseeable future over the next few days. Um, our crews are dig, dug in um, around the McKinley area right now, providing structural protection as this wind continues to drive uh, these fires um, north on us um, and as the wind starts to shift into other areas. Firefighters are responding to spot fires after embers from the McDougal Creek blaze apparently crossed the Okanagan Lake. There have been no incidents of damaged or destroyed structures in the city of 150,000 people, but there is the possibility for worsening conditions due to shifty, gust, shifting gusty winds, thunderstorms and dry lightning. There are more than 360 active wildfires across the province right now. And this is a view of the wildfire smoke over Kelowna in satellite images captured Wednesday and Thursday. The federal government says it's watching the situation in the Okanagan closely, calling it very concerning. Fire crews have been bracing for what officials predicted would be the most challenging days of B.C.'s record-breaking wildfire season. The satellite images also include a view of, the, of smoke from the blaze threatening Yellowknife hundreds of kilometers to the north of Kelowna. 
The damage has already been ex extensive. To give you an idea, the flames in the Northwest Territories have already scorched an area two and a half times the size of Toronto. The effort to help is also massive. CTV Siobhan Morris joins us now live. Siobhan, assistance coming from across the country, including from here in Ontario. Well, that's right. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry says they're in constant communication with officials in the Northwest Territories that help is on the way and lands tonight. This is what firefighters in the Northwest Territories are up against. Flames eating through forest. A red glow creeping closer to the capital of Yellowknife. Its streets deserted after its more than 20,000 residents cleared out. Ontario is sending help to keep the flames back. 65 personnel, including firefighters, command and support staff, some of them landing today. Hoses and hose bags, pump kits and batteries for radios. If we don't get these guys more gear to defend that city, it's going to be pretty catastrophic what happens there. Charity Global Medic is sending help of its own. The one thing they really need is more fire trucks. Well, it's really hard to make a fire truck appear except for units like this. A thousand liter water tank and pump system, a little bigger than a washing machine that can be used to snuff out fire. Because it fits on the back of a pickup truck, and there's a lot of pickup trucks in Yellowknife, we're able to turn any one of those pickup trucks into a fire truck. One unit's being flown to Yellowknife from Toronto, the other on its way from Edmonton. It'll arrive Friday night, it's going to be given to the fire chief, it'll be put onto one of their pickups and it'll be now a forward unit. The Red Cross is lending a hand in Alberta. That's where many evacuees have wound up, having left the familiar and comfortable behind. The Red Cross is connecting people with shelter, pillows, blankets and toiletries while they wait to find out if they can go home. The union that represents fire rangers in Ontario says they're glad to be helping, but they wish they could do more. They just don't have enough staff to leave the front lines of wildfires still raging in Ontario. It's a problem they blame on underfunding from the Ford government. Reporting live, I'm Siobhan Morris. Michelle, back to you. Thank you, Siobhan. And the Prime Minister is expected in Edmonton tonight to meet with evacuees. You can keep up to date on this story on our website, ctvnewstoronto.ca. And still to come tonight, water quality concerns as a toxic sludge breaches containment. The ongoing damage from an industrial fire in Etobicoke. The impact on animals and the environment. Shifting gears now in a big event that's back in the city. That's right. The X has returned for another year. The rides, the food and the fun have once again taken over Exhibition Place. The opening day kicked off with a celebration at Prince's Gate. We'll have more on that in a moment, but we'll start with our Lindsay Morrison, who is in the midst of all the fun. Lindsay. Michelle and Zoraida, this is the place to be on a Friday night in August. Okay, sure, it feels a little more like early fall today as opposed to late summer, but that's okay. We're having a wonderful time. A little bit of cloud cover out here, not dampening any spirits whatsoever. Look at this. It is a busy place. Uh, the Midway lights have been lit. I see tiny Tom Donuts. That is a good place to check out when you come down to the X. And like I said, so far the weather is cooperating. This weekend looks even better too. Let's begin with a look at the satellite and radar. This will give you an idea of what we've been dealing with today. Very scattered showers, cloud cover rolling in and out, but we've also had some sunny breaks. It hasn't been too bad. It has been windy though. Those winds coming out of the northwest right now sustained around 40 kilometers per hour, gusting upwards of 50 K. And as a result, our temperature today has been in the teens most of the day. Right now here in Toronto, it is 17 degrees. Let's take a look at your evening at a glance. If you're coming down to the CNE, it is going to be a one Wonderful night. Get outside, enjoy. Just maybe bring a light sweater if uh, these kinds of temperatures are not really your thing. Lots more coming up during the hour, but Michelle and Zoraida, I had to try some of the food, so I picked here pickle flavored cotton candy. Ready? Okay, let's see. <laughs> that is pickly and it's very good. And this is just, just the tip of the iceberg. We're going to go enjoy much more coming up here live from the CNE on CTV News. Back to you. It's actually good. I'm surprised. Wow, breaking news here today. Thanks, Lindsay. We'll see how much of that she eats. Okay, the CNE attracts close to one and a half million visitors each year, making it Canada's largest fair. And the crowds came out early to take in opening day. CTV's Janice Golding was among them. She joins us now. Janice, you were sampling the food yesterday. I'm sure you were taking in all the rest today. Yes, I was, and I have to say, I also tried that pickled uh, cotton candy, and 
It was not my favorite, I've got to be honest with you. Now, this is day one of the Canadian National Exhibition, and there is so much going on. Some old favorites, as well as some new draws in an annual event that actually brought $200 million into the local economy last year. It's big comeback after COVID. It was the moment many were waiting for, the official launch of the Canadian National Exhibition. It's just like a childlike joy that's just deep, deep inside me. Now, did you sew the CNE skirt yourself? I did. I did. They're actually old flags. The 144th edition kicked off with a big opening ceremony at the Prince's Gate. Tradition, yeah. We always come on the first day, enjoy it. Reminds us of when we are younger, and then it, there's lots of new stuff always. People drawn by the sights and sounds, the lure of the midway, and the rides, more than 60 in total this year. How are you feeling to be back at the CNE this year? Excellent. Wonderful. Yes. It's... And what do you guys like about it? Um, the roller coasters. The roller coasters. And what do you like about it? I like all of it. There are also plenty of exhibits, performances, and shows, including a perennial pick, the beloved super dogs. They're just so entertaining and they're so smart. Oh, I think it's wonderful. Those dogs are beautiful. And back by popular demand, the ice skating and acrobatic show, this year featuring a fan favorite, Olympic medalist and Canadian champion Elvis Stoiko in Time Flies. COVID over and everything, it's really nice to get back out to normal. Still for some, the fabulous fair food is always the star of the show. Junk food, everything greasy, sugary, that's not the best. So this is heaven for you? Yeah, it's my cheating day. Creative cuisine like cheeseburger ice cream. All right, I want to get your honest reaction. Taste it here. <laughs> and whether it's an old custom or a new tradition. Super fun. Are you having a good time? <laughs> yeah. As a kid, as a 13-year-old, I came to the city. It was like... Wow, this is what Toronto is all about. GX literally offers something for everyone. And you may be able to tell we're at the Children's Midway right now. And while you might be hearing squealing and laughter, it's actually not a bad time to be here because it's not overly crowded right now. Again, the CNE kicked off today and will run straight through to Monday, September the 4th. Reporting live, Janice Golding. Now back to Zoraida. Also this weekend, Canada's largest Filipino street festival is back for its 10th year. The Taste of Manila is promising a wide selection of Filipino food, music and vendors to check out. It takes over the streets near Bathurst and Wilson. Organizers expect more than 300,000 attendees to pass through. Meanwhile, North America's largest celebration of Ukrainian independence will take place tomorrow at Centennial Park. It'll feature performances, a marketplace and of course, food. Organizers say it's important to celebrate Ukraine as the country remains under Russian invasion. Other events this weekend include the Chinatown Festival, Wheels in the Danforth, and Panorama India Day, just to name a few. And if you're planning to hit the beach this weekend, you may want to check the city's water quality website first. As of this evening, public health officials say it's not safe to swim at Sunnyside Beach, Sander Island Beach, and Marie Curtis Park East Beach. It's because of high levels of E. coli found in the water. And water quality concerns are rising on the Mimico Creek and Humber River. Recent rain is making cleanup of oily runoff from a large industrial fire even more difficult. CTV's Beth McDonnell joins us now live with the details. Beth. Zoraida, it's been a concern for days. How far south will the sludge go? Tonight, Ontario's Ministry of the Environment says the heavy rain last night caused a rapid change in flow levels of Mimico Creek, and now it's checking how much of the material has made it into Lake Ontario. The oily mixture that spilled into Humber Creek and Mimico Creek from last Friday's massive industrial fire involving petroleum-based products in North Etobicoke is making a bigger mess. The city councillor for the area, Amber Morley, tweeting, The containment in Mimico Creek has been breached due to heavy rain. GFL, the contracted cleanup crew, is re-establishing the containment and the Ministry of the Environment and Spills Action Centre are aware and responding to this situation. Irene Jardine is a longtime resident who has been monitoring the spill daily. 
The spill was visible at Lakeshore. It's now moved further south. It's a big disaster. And last night when the rain came, some of that sludge, that oily sludge, broke off and it um, went to the mouth of the Humber. The thick brown sludge has been getting removed with absorbent booms, underflow dams and vacuum trucks. Brentag Canada, the chemical distribution company where the fire took place, says the cleanup is from the fire and fire suppression activities. So far, Toronto Wildlife Centre says 90 birds have been rescued, one hawk and 10 ducks have died. Others are worried and watching the nearby swan population closely. It's almost inevitable and they wouldn't be able to escape because they are flightless. Um, and the thing with the oil is not only that it makes them even more flightless because they're not waterproof, but they can ingest it. Ontario's Ministry of the Environment says work is underway to restore containment along Mimico Creek. With GFL cleanup crews deploying four boats in Lake Ontario to assess how much material is in the lake, installing booms in Lake Ontario and adding containment measures along the creeks where reinforcement is needed. Still, many who love this area are upset how this could happen. It's coming right down. It's going to get to the mouth of the river and into our lake. Uh, it's just awful. It's um, painful. Feeling helpless on how to stop the damage. As you can see, there are lots of birds in this creek in a, and the surrounding area. Tonight, the Ministry of the Environment says it's continuing to monitor the situation. Reporting live, I'm Beth McDonnell. Thank you, Beth. A group of First Nations leaders is calling on the housing minister and his chief of staff to resign over their handling of changes to the Greenbelt. The chiefs of Ontario represent 133 First Nations. They're weighing in after the Auditor General's scathing report on the issue. It found plans to open up Greenbelt lands for housing favoured certain developers and disregarded possible impacts to the environment and agriculture. The chiefs also say they'll request a meeting with the premier to demand the land protections be put back in place. The Premier's office says it's committed to its duty to consult Indigenous communities. Doug Ford previously said nobody received preferential treatment and changes to the Greenbelt won't be reversed. A nurse at a mental health facility in Whitby is facing nearly 20 charges amid allegations of sexually assaulting a patient. Durham police say the suspect worked at Ontario Shores Centre for Mental Health Sciences. A patient came forward saying they were assaulted on a number of occasions dating back to last year. 24-year-old Christopher Persaud of Whitby was arrested on 19 counts, including sexual assault and sexual interference. Investigators say they want to make sure there are no other victims. A developing story tonight, a man was seriously injured during a shooting in Scarborough this afternoon. It happened near Huntingwood Drive and Midland Avenue just before 4.30. No suspect or victim information has been released at this point, and it's unclear if the two were known to each other. Police are asking anyone with information to contact them. Also in Scarborough, a woman is in hospital with life-threatening injuries after she was hit by a vehicle this morning. Emergency crews were called to the area of Eglinton Avenue East and Brimley Road just before 6.30 a.m. Police say a pickup truck was traveling westbound and hit the pedestrian in a traffic lane. She was rushed to a trauma center. The driver remained on the scene and police traffic services are now investigating. We're also learning more about an incident yesterday that claimed the life of a worker at a city water plant. Police said a man died after a fall at Ashbridge's Bay Wastewater Treatment Plant and they ruled the death an industrial accident. JD Contractors of Canada now says the fall happened on the site of a bypass tunnel construction project and it's supporting a full review while offering grief counseling to employees. The Ministry of Labour has been notified. In Maui, an official who defended a decision to not sound alert sirens during last week's wildfire has resigned. Herman Andea said this week that he feared sounding the sirens could have caused people to go toward the mountains or inland and toward the fire. The Emergency Management Agency administrator stepped down yesterday. 111 people are confirmed to have died. The search for the missing has now moved to other devastated communities.
In the Canary Islands, crews are battling the worst wildfire in decades in the main tourist island of Tenerife. This is video released by the Spanish Air Force, which is continuing to drop water onto the blaze. The fire in the north of the island started Tuesday night, forcing the evacuation of more than 4,500 people. No injuries have been reported so far, but the blaze has scorched more than 3,200 hectares. Authorities said today containment efforts and more favorable weather had slowed the spread of this fire. The islands have been in drought for most of the past few years, just like most of mainland Spain. Canadians are being urged to exercise caution as a hurricane threatens the western coast of Mexico. Hurricane Hillary is moving north in record warm Pacific waters. Ottawa is warning against non-essential travel to the west central coast of the Baja California Peninsula. The Category 4 storm is expected to weaken but will still be a hurricane when it approaches the region tomorrow night. On Sunday, it is forecast to reach Southern California as the first tropical storm there in 84 years. Two European countries now have crucial support for sending F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. The U.S. says it will give Denmark and the Netherlands approval to transfer the aircraft as soon as pilot training is completed. Both countries will now discuss the matter further with their European partners. Ukraine has actively sought the American-made warplanes to help it counter Russian air superiority. A coalition of 11 countries will start training Ukrainian pilots later this month. Russia says dr a drone hit a building in central Moscow today after it was shot down. The defense ministry said some fragments fell on the grounds of an exposition there. There was no fire or injuries, but officials say air traffic at four major airports around the capital was briefly disrupted. The Kremlin is blaming Ukraine. There was no immediate comment from Kyiv. In Ottawa, Green Party leader Elizabeth May says a top-secret briefing on foreign interference did not allow her access to key intelligence documents. Having gone through what was available to an opposition party leader with top-secret security clearance, I can't conclude that David Johnson's conclusions were reasonable, nor can I conclude they're unreasonable, because all I got was a footnote to a document I couldn't see. In May, former Special Rapporteur David Johnston released a report on alleged meddling in Canadian elections. May and Jagmeet Singh have both received top-secret security clearance, but May said she was only shown two documents today, 25 pages in total. The NDP leader has not had his briefing yet. Coming up on CTV News, heads up, there's a new unsanctioned traffic authority in town, a traffic referee, a man taking it upon himself to hand out red and yellow cards when drivers break the rules of the road. And I'm Pat Foran. Coming up, it's Feedback Friday. More viewers tell us they purchase vehicles with rolled back odometers. More taxpayers have been told to repay their SERB payments, and not everyone likes the idea of being tracked by their car insurance company. Feedback Friday is just ahead. Well, it is all fun and games here at opening night of the CNE. In fact, we're playing fun ball. I'm going to take a shot here. I, I'm told to aim for that green circle there. Let's see what happens. Oh, a little too much bounce. Uh, rebound, nah, not quite, but that's okay. It was a good try. Uh, lots of great prizes to be won here. That looks pretty cool. If you're not spending the weekend in Toronto, maybe you're off to the cottage or a campground. Here's a look at what you can expect this weekend. It's going to be a nice one. Today was really just the coolest day. Watch for some chilly overnight lows, though, over the next couple of nights, and then we're hot by Sunday. Stay with us. We've got a full look at your forecast coming up here live from the CNE. And stay with us. We've got another full night of great shows for you as well right here on CTV. Some relief is in store for drivers. Sick of navigating bumpy Toronto streets, the city is launching a pothole repair blitz tomorrow. Crews will work from 6 a.m. through to 6 p.m. on expressways, major roads, and local streets to try and keep them in a state of good repair. This is the fifth blitz of its kind this year, with more than 135,000 potholes repaired so far in 2023. 
And if you're not respecting the rules of the road, you could soon be the recipient of a yellow or even a red card from Toronto's soccer referee, traffic referee. The 59-year-old is a performance artist who transforms himself to look like a FIFA official. He told our online news team the idea came about when he noticed drivers in Toronto consistently blocking crosswalks. You can find out where to spot him and when and how drivers are responding on our website, ctvnewstoronto.ca. Well, we had a lot of reaction to our recent stories on the bank investigator scam and insurance companies wanting to place tracking devices on vehicles at high risk of theft. More Canadians are also getting an unwanted surprise that they may have to repay SERB benefits they received during the pandemic. Here's Pat Foran and Feedback Friday. Pat. Thanks, Zoraida. And Michelle, we also had a story last night of a recent graduate who was shocked the car she bought had a rolled back odometer. It's a bigger problem than many people realize. And other viewers say it's also happened to them. Samira, a recent graduate, thought she found the perfect vehicle to buy on Facebook Marketplace. It was a 2013 Kia Optima with 163,000 kilometers. But after she bought the car, she found out its odometer had been rolled back from 265,000. I would not have even taken the time out of my day to go look at this car. Criminals are using tools to roll back odometers. Letitia wrote, I bought a car and after checking the car facts, it had a rolled back odometer of 200,000 kilometers kilometers. I've had to spend $13,000 in unexpected repairs. About $4.6 billion in pandemic benefits went to people it shouldn't have. The Canada Revenue Agency is now trying to collect that money. Eduardo Cho thought he was allowed to receive CERB, but CRA told him you need to pay back $12,000. This has got to be some sort of mistake. I mean, this is three years ago. Laura Lee wrote, I've been told to pay back almost $25,000 in CERB payments. I'm trying to go back to school and now I'm terrified I won't be able to because of this debt. Our winder Kelsey got a letter from his insurance company saying he must install an anti-theft tracking device on his Toyota pickup truck. His insurance will pay up to $400 for it, but if he doesn't install the device, his premiums will go up. If you guys don't do this, we will increase your premium. Many viewers felt the devices are a good move to combat theft, but Robert told us, I'm concerned about my privacy and insurance companies tracking my every move. It's also unfair if I don't accept it, they can raise my rates. Ellen Hickton got a call from someone claiming to be with her bank, saying they needed help to catch a scammer. She followed their instructions and sent them more than $16,000 in Bitcoin and gift cards. It was a scam. This is going to have life-changing implications for her. Priscilla wrote, I got a call stating my grandson was arrested and needed money for bail. From watching CTV News, I knew it was a scam and hung up. Thanks for doing these segments. And we hear from people almost every day who have been scammed. So if you get an unusual text, call or email, take your time and don't feel pressure to act on it. And if you have the slightest doubt, just ignore it. On your side, I'm Pat Foran. If you have a consumer story idea, email us at alert at ctv.ca. Well, the evening is here on opening day at the X. The sights, the sounds, I love the smells of all the food. There's nothing like it in the city. It's a tradition. It's a yearly tradition. And you know, as long as the rain stays away, Linz, I wouldn't mind walking around the X in this kind of weather. Well, and listen, I know that it's been a very changeable weather kind of day, but the sun is shining right now, and we are enjoying ourselves here. It's amazing the difference the sun makes. It feels like it's warmed up a degree or two already. We're having some fun enjoying the games here at the CNE. We're going to check out the Midway next, but I'm also going to try my hand at whack-a-mole in just a moment. I've been told that this game is all right for my uh, abilities. We'll see what happens. But first, we have to talk about your weather forecast, especially if you two want to come down and check out the CNE. We'll begin by letting you know that weather is brought to you by Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. It's hard to stop a train. Now, it has been a bit of an unsettled day today. We've had on and off showers in some areas. We've certainly had some cloud cover. This sunshine, as I mentioned, is a nice little late addition to our afternoon and now early evening. We will say goodbye to this area of low pressure that continues to spin and rotate. That's what's been bringing us the cloud, the gusty winds, and yeah, the cool temperatures. 
more on that in just a moment. But as we head into the day tomorrow, it is going to be a mostly sunny day. We'll freeze this at about the noon hour. There it is, looks beautiful. Sunday, we might see a little bit of an increase in cloud in some areas and maybe some late spotty showers, but overall it's going to be a good one. It is, however, going to be hot right now. I wouldn't exactly call it hot. We're at 17 degrees here in Toronto, 22 in Windsor, and uh, tonight we're dropping to a low of 13. Check out Waterloo, though. Nine for the low, eight in London and only nine in Peterborough. Tomorrow's forecast high, 26 degrees, feeling closer to 30. Yeah, summer's returning after a fall-like day. We can all head out to the beach. Temperatures will be slightly cooler in places like Aurelia, Bancroft, and Owen Sound, but overall, nice-looking day overall. Let's talk about uh, some smoke that's been drifting its way eastward from Western Canada. We might notice a little bit of haze this weekend, and eleva uh, elevated pollution levels are going to be possible in the air as well. Here is your seven-day forecast. So as we make our way into the weekend, it's looking great. It's looking hot on Sunday. Monday, we've got some cloud and a chance of showers into Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, here we go. I'm trying whack-a-mole. Oh, no, but I don't want to hurt them, but... Oh, oh, okay, well, I wasn't even close to winning, but that was a lot of fun, uh, Michelle and Zoraida. Uh, maybe I'll try that again. That was not bad for a first try, but I've got some, some work to do. I'll send it back inside to you for now. Got to put some muscle in that, Linz. <laughs> All right, thank you. And military members, veterans, and their families also will gather tomorrow for the annual Warriors Day Parade at the X. The event has been running since 1921, honoring those who served and those who serve today. This year's theme is honoring the women of the Canadian Armed Forces, emergency services, and the home front. The TTC will offer free rides all day to military members, vets, peacekeepers, and one companion each. These Canadian flags have been steadily dotting the route along the 400 highway for more than a decade. After the break, the story of the father and son's patriotism paving a path on the Canadian shield. It's been catching the eye of drivers who make that familiar drive to cottage country. High above the rock cut, every few kilometers, a Canadian flag. It's the work of a father and son duo, the pair paying homage to flag and family for more than a decade. CTV's Rob Cooper has more. These pieces of Canadiana across the Canadian shield outside Perry Sound have caught the eye of drivers on Highway 400 for years. But no one is really knowing who is doing it until now. Oh, it was, it was my dad's idea, and they, uh, when he told me about it, I thought it'd be fun, and, you know, I'll tag along, and I'll give you a hand. Dave House and his father, Ted, started putting the flags on the rock face about 15 years ago. Both proud Canadians say they just wanted to celebrate their country and bring a smile to people's faces. I'm proud to be Canadian. I love putting up the flags and knowing that other people like them as well. So for me, it's tradition. It's fun. I like doing it with the old man. The idea came from Ted. He says he came up with the idea to honor his father, uncles, and grandmother who all served in World War II. Happy that people like my relatives and thousands of others um, spent their time and their lives to protect us all and to keep us free. The flags have to be replaced every two years and fly prior to the Canada Day long weekend and stay up through Thanksgiving. The father-son duo takes pictures documenting their work that has caught the attention of many. This car pulls over on the highway and this guy comes out and he gave me an envelope and leaves. And it was $50. So, <laughs> and he gave me a note. You have provided many years of happiness and pride to untold thousands of people. That's what he said to me. I was so proud to hear that. That mystery man who donated $50 to Dave and Ted for their efforts never gave them his name and signed the letter off by saying, thanks for your dedication to the principle of paying it forward. Dave still carries a copy of that letter to remind him that people appreciate the small things in life. Rob Cooper, CTV News, Perry Sound. 
Canada is facing a looming shortage of a diabetes drug, Ozempic, also used off-label for weight loss. Manufacturer Novo Nordisk reports it's dealing with supply issues, specifically affecting its one milligram injectable pens. Smaller doses will still be available for patients with type 2 diabetes. A company spokesperson cited similar supply challenges in many other countries. Health Canada says the impacts are expected from late August to early October. Efforts are continuing in Hollywood to resolve at least one of the ongoing strikes disrupting the film and TV industry. The Writers Guild of America met with representatives of some of the major studios on Thursday. The two sides are said to still be far apart 108 days into the strike. The WGA and actors who join them on the picket lines later on are pushing for better compensation and job protections. Studio heads were expected to speak today to discuss their next move in the talks. Disney has officially set the debut date for a long-awaited TV adaptation of the Percy Jackson novels. <laughs> Percy Jackson and the Olympians tells the story of a boy who finds out he's a demigod and the challenges that follow. The same books were adapted as movies in 2010 and 2023, but the author of the novels, Rick Reardon, helped create this new series. It begins streaming December 20th. It's called the Scarab. It's some kind of world-destroying weapon. And a new box office contender is looking to push Barbie out of the top spot. Variety reports DC's latest superhero film, Blue Beetle, could make between $25 and $32 million U.S. in its opening weekend. Barbie is expected to add $17 to $20 million to its total after four weeks at number one. A new documentary on music superstar Lil Nas X will have its world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival next month. Long live Montero. The movie follows Lil Nas X on his first ever concert tour as he navigates his rise to fame. It also spotlights his journey as a black gay music artist. Lil Nas X Long Live Montero debuts at Roy Thompson Hall September 9th. Stars Tonight is brought to you by Last Men's Bad Boy. Who's better? Nobody. After the break, a Raptors reunion. Why members of the original 90s squad are in town for a long-awaited party and how fans can get in on the excitement this weekend. We're heading back to school on the next CB24 Breakfast. Shauna Thomas will join us for a special Meal Prep Monday to help get your students out the door and ready to tackle the day. And the math guru will have some helpful tips to get the kids prepared for the rigors of back to school brain. It all adds up on the next CP24 Breakfast up first at 5.30. If we don't get these guys more gear to defend that city, it's going to be pretty catastrophic what happens there. Updating our top stories as wildfires continue to tear through the Northwest Territories. Relief efforts from the rest of Canada are growing. Ontario is sending 65 personnel, including firefighters and support staff, with some of them landing today. It's coming right down. It's going to get to the mouth of the river and into our lake. Uh, it's just awful. Cleanup efforts continue along Mimico Creek at the Humber River following a massive fire at a chemical distribution company in Etobicoke last week. Officials saying recent rain pushing oil and sludge further south, making a bigger mess. Junk food, everything greasy, sugary, as not the best. Mm -hmm. It's a bittersweet return. A signed summer is wrapping up, but the CNE is officially open today. And there are quite a few new additions to look forward to, including interesting eats like cheeseburger, flavored ice cream, and pickle fries. The X runs until September 4th from 10 a.m. to midnight daily. And remember to keep up to date day and night through our website, ctvnewstoronto.ca, and by downloading the CTV News app. And if you have a news tip, photos, or video breaking news, let us know. As extreme weather impacts more of the country, the insurance industry is keeping a close eye on developments. Insurance Bureau of Canada VP Craig Stewart spoke with BN and Bloomberg. He said events like the wildfires in the Northwest Territories could prompt higher home insurance premiums, especially in Western Canada. Insured loss payouts hit a record $3.4 billion last year. Stewart says insurers will have no choice but to raise their own prices as climate risks grow. Evacuees of the wildfires in the Northwest Territories are among those finding themselves caught in the middle of a fight between Meta and the federal government, unable to access Canadian news updates on the social media sites. BNM Bloomberg's Jacqueline Hansen has those details. 
as residents of the Northwest Territories rush to flee their homes. Turning to Facebook for the latest news updates isn't an option. It's an access point many Canadians have grown to rely on for years, but Meta has begun blocking Canadian news on its platforms. It's pushing back against the federal government's online news act, which would require internet sites to pay news providers for clicks. Meta says evacuees can still access content from official government agencies and emergency services. While Carleton University Media Studies professor Dwayne Winsack believes the News Act is poorly crafted, he also believes Meta's decision to ban news is irresponsible and in emergencies such as wildfires increases risks. Let's take a look at some of the closing market numbers for today. The Canadian dollar is trading essentially flat at about 73.8 cents U.S. West Texas Intermediate Oil gained just 76 cents to about $80 U.S. a barrel. And Western Canadian Select gained a little over a dollar to roughly $63 U.S. a barrel. As for stock markets, the TSX ended the day just a hair higher, up six points to 19,818.39. That is the latest in business. I'm Jacqueline Hansen of BNM Bloomberg. Three years after the fact, the Raptors will mark a major milestone this weekend. The Raptors joined the NBA in the 1995-96 season. A 25th anniversary party was planned in 2020, but was derailed by COVID. Well, now some of the original members of the squad are in town for a reunion. Two of them, AC Earl and Tracy Murray, joined CP24 Breakfast for a look back at the inaugural year, including an unexpected win over Michael Jordan and the Bulls, and the impact that had on the franchise. Franchise. It was great for the city. It was great for, we, we were the foundation of the Raptors. So it was great to have that signature win to bring the interest to, to basketball, especially with it being a hockey town. Um, we also beat this, uh, the Orlando Magic, who, who was uh, the Eastern Conference Championship uh, the, the year before that I played against them when I was with the Rockets and won the championship. We beat them as well. You have to have interesting wins at the beginning to keep the interest, to make people look forward to next year and the year after that and the year after that. The reunion weekend, we'll see some other familiar faces come back to town, including Toronto's first GM, Isaiah Thomas, and former Raptors big man, Marcus Camby, who was drafted second overall in 1996. There will be a public meet and greet tomorrow at In Vintage We Trust in Parkdale from noon to one. The Blue Jays are in Cincinnati this weekend for a series against the Reds. Toronto is coming off a 9-4 loss Wednesday to the Phillies. That saw starter Kevin Gosman give up seven runs in just five innings. Jose Barrios will look to turn things around this evening. The team will also likely get a big boost with the return of shortstop Beau Bichette, who has been out with a knee injury. It's also a big weekend for horse racing in the city as Woodbine Racetrack prepares to run the 164th King's Plate. The event is the first leg of the OLG Canadian Triple Crown. It was known as the Queen's Plate under the late Elizabeth II. This will mark the first King's Plate since 1951. A Canadian is on top of the world after winning a unique race at the North Pole. Three, two, one. Runners took part in a summer marathon this week. It's usually held in winter on much thicker ice, but competitors had to contend with soft snow and slush. It didn't bother Patrick Charlebois. The Canadian won the men's division. It's the first time I run with a life jacket on, of course, for a marathon. Uh, But, I mean, wow, it's part of the challenge. I mean, uh, we're at the North Pole. Nothing is normal. Six marathon runners competed in the race, along with four half-marathon entrants. Well, there is always something new at the CNE, and this year it's the super wheel, among many things. This is a Ferris wheel. It's about 160 feet high, and there's actually a VIP pod with a glass floor. I think that's pretty cool. Lots of people checking this out, and of course we are enjoying the sounds, the squeals of delight from here on the midway, and the sun is going to set tonight at about 20 minutes after 8 o'clock, but the lights are already on. And it's pretty magical here in the evening hours at the CNE. We're going to recap your weekend weather forecast and beyond after this break. Stay with us. Tonight, the information gap as the wildfires burn. A little dangerous not having the news on Facebook. Ottawa demands that Meta lift a ban on Canadian news links as the fire emergencies intensify. 
later on CTV National News. And a reminder, the CTV News at 6 podcast is available as a download every weeknight. And a special hello to all, of, all those of you listening to the newscast live on News Talk 1010. Get Toronto's top stories, breaking news alerts, and watch live. Download the CTV News app. Take a look at this. A lot of activity high above the waterfront during our noon hour today. This is time lapse video, dark clouds moving in and then breaking up and moving out to expose sunshine and a blue sky. Since then, thousands have converged on the X grounds uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far this evening, that seems like the rain's holding up. Yeah, as long as the rains hold up tonight, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty good opening weekend for the CNE weather-wise as well, Lindsay. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a great Saturday and Sunday. Even this evening, conditions not so bad. You might consider a light jacket. I'm very comfortable like this, but I know as the sun sets further, it will cool down even more. Let's take one more look at the satellite and radar. This will show some of the clouds that we saw in the video and a few showers creeping their way out of the area. Here's the weekend. Saturday looking awesome. Sunday is hot, a little bit hazy, but still looking great. And we'll take one more look at the seven day forecast. Next week will be seasonal. We'll see a little more in the way of cloud again and perhaps a few showers midweek. It's been lots of fun broadcasting live from the CNE. I wanted to try one more treat, uh, Michelle and Zoraida. This is cheeseburger ice cream. Do you dare me? <laughs> Here dare we go. You. Be honest, be honest. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. It's different. <laughs> it's awesome. Come on down and enjoy the X. I don't think I believe her when she I says it's good. <laughs> I want to see Lindsay eat that whole thing. Let's see you eat it. I'm kidding. Don't do it. You know what, though? <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Lindsay. You know what? She's pregnant. Sport. She maybe you, know, you like those weird mixes when you're pregnant, <laughs> right? Okay, th that's it for us, but be sure to join John Venevella Rao tonight at 11 for CTV National News, followed by uh, Zarada Almond with our next local newscast at 11.30. Yeah, in the meantime, our coverage continues anytime on CP24 and online at ctvnewstoronto.ca. For our Lindsay Morrison and all of us here at CTV News, thank you for watching and have a great night. Brave Lindsay Morrison. Yes. <laughs> See you at 11.30. I'd try it. <laughs>